In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the paired sample t-test for the study where individuals, 10 of them, provided ratings for the attractiveness of faces. And I believe there were 40 faces considered attractive and 40 unattractive. And each person got a, a mean for the attractive faces in terms of how much they rated it to be attractive and how much they thought the unattractive faces were attractive. And so this is within subjects design because each person gave ratings to both the attractive and the attractive faces. And my hunch is they counterbalanced, so the faces weren't presented in the same order. So you can't think of this necessarily as a time one, time two study in a strict sense. It's really just that the same people gave ratings to all of the faces, both attractive and unattractive faces in the photographs. So in order to conduct the paired sample t-test, go into Analyze, Compare Means, and Paired Sample t-test. And we can see that we can put attractive in the first variable box and unattractive in the second, and click OK. And here we get the paired sample t-test, where we have the attractive faces being rated at 5.79, and the unattractive faces being rated at 4.71. And so there is some consistency here. And this was considered a very, you know, surprising result because the faces were only shown to people for 13 milliseconds, which is not a sufficient amount of time to even consider something consciously. And the correlation between attractive and unattractive faces was 0.627. So this is the more typical magnitude of a correlation I'd expect to see in a within subject design rather than the 0.134 or something like that that I saw in the GPA study. Now, the null hypothesis of equal means has been rejected because we can see that the p-value here is equal to 0 0.001. It's less than 0 0.05. The t-value is equal to 4.90 and the degrees of freedom are 9. The sample size is only 10. It's actually surprising to get a publication with only a sample size of 10, but here we are. That study uh, managed to get published with that sample size and it found a fairly sensational result which is that apparently people can actually perceive the attractiveness of a face at the sub conscious level, if you will. So the mean difference amounts to 1.08, and the standard deviation of those different scores is equal to 0.69, and the standard error of the mean is 0.22. And the lower bound and upper bound is really huge. Look how, how wide that range is. It's somewhere between 0.58 and 1.57. And the reason it's so big is that the sample size is so small. So that's the paired sample t-test. We could look at the assumption of normally distributed difference scores. So let's do that, attractiveness diff minus the unattractive one, and click OK. And let's just see if we've got any evidence to suggest the data are non-normally distributed. And in particular, I'm going to be looking at skew and kurtosis. And here we have skew of 0.768 and kurtosis of 0.834. So this seems quite decently distributed in terms of normality and I don't have any outlier difference scores either. So the last thing I have to do is create the line chart. And you see that if I create the line chart with just the raw data, uh, I will get, I have to go into summaries of separate variables, simple. I will get misleading results. Whoops, I want the mean options display error bars, click continue. So I'm going through this quickly because I'm assuming that you saw me do this before. So now we have a drop, it's a decrease, and these standard errors, it was a 10 point scale I think that they were rated on. So let's actually at least change the scale here from one to 10. We'll keep it at 0.5. Uh, it's, yeah, we'll just keep, keep it to one and one. So. The error bars are actually pretty small to begin with, but they're actually going to get a lot smaller once I calculate the adjusted uh, confidence intervals. They're even going to be a lot smaller than that. So if you wanted to report a line graph with this study, uh, some people, a lot of people, to be honest with you, would argue that you should be using the adjusted confidence intervals, which I showed you in a previous study. So I'm going to do it quickly here to get the adjusted uh, data. So you'll recall the first thing I have to do is calculate the uh, variance and covariance with the associated with the raw data. So I'm going to get that. So there we go. So now I need to uh, get the adjusted variances. So 0.273 minus 0.4. So 
0.723 minus 0.4 is 0.323. So I'm going to write that down. 0.323. What? 0.323. And I need to get the adjusted variance for unattractive. So 0.563 minus 0 0.40. 0.163. Uh, and the next thing I've got to do is, uh, so those are the adjusted variances. So now I need to get the adjusted standard deviations, which is to just square those two values that I calculated. So the first adjusted variance was 0.323, and I need to get the square root of that. And now I've got 0.568. So I'm doing these calculations to three decimal places. I would say that you should do that as a minimum. You might consider four or five to get even more accuracy. 0.163 square rooted 0.404. So now I've got the adjusted standard deviations. And now I need to calculate the Z scores. I need to convert the raw scores into Z scores and then get the Z scores to transform those. So let me get the Z scores, descriptive statistics, get convert these into Z scores. I'm very nearly there. Now I just need to convert these into the adjusted scores with the raw score mean and the adjusted standard deviations for each. So the adjusted means are here 5.79. Those aren't adjusted means, those are raw score means 5.79 and 4.71. So let's calculate the attractive adjusted score. So transform attractive adjusted. And I will put, whoops, put the, the mean 5.79 plus uh, the product of the attractive Z score times uh, the adjusted standard deviation, 0.568. All right, so click OK. And now I need to create the other one, which is, whoop, I want to create that as called unattractive. Unattractive adjustment, adjusted scores. So 4.71 plus this product, which is z-score unattractive, times the 0 0.404 adjusted standard deviation that I calculated earlier, and click OK. So now I've got two adjusted variables that should have, that's not really spelled correctly, so let me just change that, attractive and unattractive, and calculate the line chart for those data. Now I got the 95% confidence intervals. And here we go. So this is what the adjusted one looks like. I should have calculated the descriptors just to show us that for sure that we've actually got the correct values in terms of having not changed the mean. We only need those. Okay, so it's 5.79 and 4.71, which is the same thing as the raw scores. And the standard deviations have been changed to 0.568, which is a pretty significant drop from 0.85, and 0 0.404, which is again a pretty significant drop from 0.75. Now, these error bars don't look like they're that much different, but we have to actually change the scale. So let's change this scale from 1 to 10. So that's actually much narrower in terms of confidence intervals. If you compare this with, with this, there's a, you can tell that they're narrower now by, you know, this is noticeable. Look how narrow that is. It's pretty tight around the mean, and this is bigger. So with the same scale, 1 to 10, you can see that the confidence intervals are much narrower in this example, which is a consequence of the fact that the covariance and the correlation uh, was so big between the two conditions, unattractive and, and attractive phases.